Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in Marcus from Halas. I hope I said that correctly. Thank you. Yeah, you can say how, however you want. We say Halas. Halas. I want to say it right. So thank you for correcting me. I need correcting sometimes. Um, I don't want to sound like a buffoonish American like we all do. And uh, I want to be smart as I feel when I listen to this music. Um, first of all, great to see you. And I sincerely hope you and the band are all well. It is a very rough time in the world when is it not but it is right now and i do i just hope you got your all your families your friends your collaborators are all okay yeah well, thank you yeah we are all, all right uh, i mean i agree it's a very very rough situation here in here here in europe and yeah you know yeah for sure yeah it's uh in a, a weird and unprecedented time and we you've we, thrown that word around a lot unprecedented and uh I make a lot of jokes with uh, death metal bands and black metal bands, like, you know, all those plagues and viruses and famines and wars you always sing about? That all <laughs> happened. And uh, Halas does not sing about those things particularly, but um, much more upbeat and different subject matter. But Isle of Wisdom is the new record coming out on April 8th from Napalm Records. And before we unpack that record and talk about it a little bit, um, I just wanted to ask how the last couple of years have been for the band while creating this record because it has been just such a wild year. I didn't know if you had written this record and you were sitting on it for a while waiting for things to blow over or if you had written it during this whole time in the world. No, I mean, we were supposed to go on tour for the, the last album, Conundrum. And we basically, I, I don't know what happened. This is This was like at the same time as the pandemic started. So we were in Hamburg, the first show, and then everything got canceled. I mean, the world got canceled basically. So we just had to go back and I don't know, it, it probably wasn't on the way back, but we said, what is happening? And we should probably make a new album. What do you say? <laughs> so we, we kind of started out fresh. I, I don't think we, maybe two or, or three riffs we had and I don't know if any any were used but so that's kind of and you know also we didn't know how how long this was going to be for back then we were you know maybe we can do this I think we we uh, postponed the tour to like six months later but of course that didn't happen but we started to make the album so we um, we met up like twice a week I think I think no. Uh, every every second week, I think uh, maybe we were lazy in the beginning because yeah, let's let's also take this time and have some time off kind of thing. But then we started and we started kind of like we use we usually do. We write a backstory and you know start composing and writing the lyrics while we compose reflecting on the story and how the how the music sounds like and what kind of how will we take this part of the story from part a to part b should it be musically should it be like something happens along the way and yeah nice i i often you know the a lot of bands give themselves a moniker or the press will give a band a moniker but adventure metal just speaks to so well at what you guys do and just you know totally encapsulates what you do which i love i've been a fan for a long time it was sort of on my radar and uh i mentioned offline i had traveled to roadburn in 2018 and saw yeah. you guys perform at roadburn you were marvelous um the whole place was full expecting you guys the entire venue that i think is now a jewelry store but the venue at the time was beautiful it was like an old church and uh i don't think people were ready for for what your band brought that day and so you know uh, conundrum was great and uh, i'm sad that you didn't get to tour on it do you think that now when you get back on the road with this new album you'll be able to still perform some of the conundrum work or is it going to just kind of stay in amber you will have to go to the shows no i'm just kidding yeah <laughs> of course we this is actually like uh it is still the same tour basically i think one venue had to be changed or something like that so this this has been merged so i think it's even called the conundrum and i love wisdom tour so definitely there will be some conundrum songs on there 
good. I reached the... I think we 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 almost uh, was going to perform the whole conundrum, except maybe one or two songs. But of course, we don't have time for that now. But there will be songs from Conundrum too. Good. I'm glad it it deserves to be heard. I think it was terrific when it came out, and uh, I might even go back and listen to it again now that I've I've had a chance to hear the new one. But I was. And really, you know, I grew up a progressive music person. I played in bands that made this music a little bit. And uh, I think of it as prog. I don't know if you do, but I do. Prog related or inspired or influenced. What were some of the bands that your band were inspired by just in general when you formed? When we formed, um, you know, that was back in like 2011, 12. I think the being... uh, not so young young anymore, but kind of young back then, 10 years ago. Um, other bands in Sweden started to explode, like Witchcraft and um, Graveyard, and of course, Cadaver too. So they were kind of, while not, we listen a lot to them, but they were kind of like showing the way that, oh, you can still do this kind of music. Um, we we had all been listening to, of course, you know, Iron Maiden and stuff like that, but also like, really starting to get into Uriah Heep and uh, Rush. And me personally coming from a lot, like 10 years from the age of 12 to 22 or something like that, mostly listening to, well, first Black Sabbath, and then quite quickly got into black, black metal and death metal and music like that. So the kind of progressive side on it, at least for me, was just a continuation on the black metal kind of form, you know, like a landscape kind of uh, not so much chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, but kind of also exploring that side, of course, because I'd never written stuff like that. So how do you make a, I mean, we, we had one chorus on the first full length and that was Star Rider and that went, went well, but none of the other songs even have a chorus I think so we just we just kind of made music kind of organically kind of like the music we listen to and and yeah nice were you also a fan I I hear a lot of um early King Crimson sometimes in Halas I hear Emerson Lincoln Palmer on the keyboard stuff all high praise I'm a huge fan of all those bands and then of course Pink Floyd is my favorite band so you know, I hear all those things. As much as I love metal and extreme and heavy metal, I do feel like this is a very fertile and golden time when you can have, you know, so many different kinds of bands and so many different kinds of influences and then kind of put your own stamp on it, which is what you have done. Thank you. Yeah, that that is the goal, actually. Um, kind of uh, no boundaries kind of thing, kind of deal. I know probably most bands say this in interviews, but we really did that from the beginning. And... You know, we work a lot of a lot with the dynamics within songs, but also within albums. We don't necessarily want an album that is very uh, diverse uh, theme wise, but it should be diverse and in- interesting, like uh, musically. And you, I, I personally like to get very surprised when I listen to music. Not too surprised, like. Me, I'm not a very big fan of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, to be honest, because that is uh, uh, too much surprises, too often. But you know, when you when you when you go along and you have a form, and then oh, the form shifts. That's very that that's very interesting to me. That so that's what we're working with, with our abilities, so to speak. Like we are not as good as Dream Theater, obviously, but you know, like technically good, but. Who is though? Who is? Just very, <laughs> yeah. very few people. Uh, Are they? I, I have. I have. Yeah. Well, I have. Yeah. I have. I have definitely spent many hours like trying to play those bass lines and and hurting, hurting my wrists and fingers <laughs> trying. But you know, I do appreciate the way you put things together. Interestingly enough, I love that you. You know, when you talk about albums, this is really a very rich listening experience, and I feel like it needs to be appreciated as a whole album. I know you guys write in concepts. And that's kind of your approach. But uh, I rem- I saw the visualizer a couple of months ago for Earl's theme. And I was like, this song is awesome. But I'm almost like I don't want to pull it away from the rest of the album to listen to it. So now that I've gotten to hear the full album, uh, 
which was you know sent to us for the press I, I I feel like almost the singles don't do justice to the whole. I appreciate you say that. Um, mm -hmm. And it's also uh, n not a struggle at all, but it's also very difficult to 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 get the 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 songs that are both, you know, you can both separate them. And I think maybe maybe that that could be if, if we lack something on this album, it's something that can be isolated this is very much a concept so um while i appreciate what you say uh about earth theme i uh, i also think um yeah it's 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 difficult well it was difficult for us this time you know surely surely and i, and I want to give a shout out to napalm records your label they've done a very good job um, you know, Halas is a band that is not like any other band in the world. And I know that's really a lot of people in the music industry say stuff like that. Like you say cliches and things, this is our best record, but you're supposed to say that this is your best record. No, this is definitely much worse than the last one. No one would ever say such things, but Napalm has done a very good job. They don't have another band remotely like you because uh, you are a very unique and special band. So I think they've done a very nice job promoting the, the album Isle of Wisdom and uh it is just such a great like i said a full experience it's weird we are in a streaming age when people seem to only be able to digest on one hand people are only able to digest a, a song at a time or an ep or a few songs but also at the same time because vinyl i feel has made such a big comeback that people are actually spending time with the music and listening to whole albums all the way through and there's no you don't have to measure everything music industry family. I'm just sending a shout out to everybody that knows me. I do some music marketing and I work in social media and you know, like you don't, not everything has to be quantified. You can just get a record and enjoy it. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree. I agree. And like you say, we're, we're very um, glad, but also surprised that they want to work with us. I'm, I'm also, thank you very much for your kind, kind words. Obviously that's what we were going for. Like, to be something unique like everybody else but you know like i said before we uh, we really try to merge uh, things at our best abilities and from very di diverse s sources so to speak so to speak or influences right on and uh, i also want to say that uh, for folks that don't know and maybe are watching this interview and are just getting to learn about your band i feel like artwork your album covers always stand equal to the music which is you know a thing for me maybe not for everybody else i love artwork my first records were all on vinyl and i remember opening the gatefold and looking at a kiss record good or bad and being like as a little kid and being like wow this is incredible so i love the artwork you guys always put together for the records and this one is also uh, another interesting one thank you yeah that's how we how we uh we've always worked at least since the since the first ep we we uh, just give, uh, I mean, it's probably easier when you have like a plot, like we always have a story. We give the, some pointers to the artist and sometimes it comes back way before uh, the music is uh, recorded or even uh, done. So that can also be very inspiring. Like, wow, this is, looks so good. And this should sound like this looks like, but also uh, it's, it's kind of a theme. I mean, uh, on on every album, we have asked ourselves, "What kind of color does this music feel like to you?" And like for excerpts, we all said, for some reason, it sounds blue. So that was also a pointer we could give to the artist. And to we want it's about this and this, and also it's it goes in the theme of blue. So yeah, we we very much work with the uh, with the artwork as well. I wish we could uh, be better artists. <laughs> Maybe we could. I mean, the the artists we have worked with are amazing, but it's also you know, it's very difficult to get your the things you have in your head on paper, so to speak. Right on. It's almost like a color grade if you were a filmmaker. Like, what color is this album? Yeah. What color is this movie? Or uh, you know what are uh, one of those quizzes? What aura is your album? So yeah, very good. It'd be a good good mind space for fans 
when they get a listen to this thing and they take it all in. Um, obviously, most of this, you know, you, you know, it's been shut down for a while. You haven't been able to tour. And again, my first exposure to you was mostly live and these live performances that blew my mind. And I think of you as a band as much as you put all this work into these albums. I would love to see you perform this record live. So hopefully you have some touring plans ready. And I and I would hope at some point maybe you will play all of Vile of Wisdom as a standalone live. I think it would be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now we have kind of a, like most bands probably a, a backlog kind of. We are working on the the postponed tour uh, tour uh, shows and the tour, like I mentioned before, the Conundrum tour, which is now Isle of Wisdom tour as well. So we will definitely play some of the new songs uh, and. We are also doing a, all the first three albums show in a month in Stockholm. So we are very much into that kind of concept that you're talking about. And an Island of Wisdom show would definitely not be impossible in the future. Nice. Did you, in going back and getting ready to play that uh, show coming up with the first three albums, did you dis rediscover something about your own music? that maybe you forgot about? I know you play used to play a lot of those songs live anyway, but maybe you, something surprised you or jumped out to you about the old music. No, not really. Like you said, we, we play most of them. I mean, I think I had to relearn one or two, and it's just two, two songs, I think, or maybe three that we've never played live before on these three albums. So there, there are not so many surprises there, but... I mean, you, you can you can appreciate how you how you were thinking, or also how you were not thinking when you were younger. Excerpt is almost some of the songs are almost um, like eight years old now. So there are a lot of things I wouldn't have done <laughs> like that today. Uh, but I think it's very it's very nice that they are done like that and. I think, um, yeah, you know, they have uh, they have this youthfulness of them, and uh, I appreciate that still. I also don't know where the last ten years of my life went. It's gone, <laughs> and it's been like that. And the last few years made it uh, even worse, if you yeah, will. Definitely. But you know, all things in, in considering, I'm glad to still be here and jamming out to records like yours. And I really appreciate you continuing to make your art and make music. It's it's been a real gift to have music to have as a escape from everything else, war and plague and things. So I'm, I'm really thankful. Um, and again, like I said, I think of your band as such a good live band. I can't wait for you to get back on. I can't wait for you to get back on the road. I'm sure you feel the same. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you very much. Beside the travel, was there anything particularly you missed about touring? Of course, uh, the simple things like going on the road with your friends, your best friends and, you know, seeing uh, different places. I mean, I've seen I've seen this apartment now uh, quite a lot. <laughs> Getting tired of it, um, and you know, meet people. I I got so used to meet people uh, just for you know you know that you're only meeting this person for like a, a, an hour or two this evening, and you know that kind of kind of meetings. Um, while they are short, they can also give you very much too. Stuff like that I miss. And like, you know, discovering food and also getting food handled to you. <laughs> it's also very nice. You know, stuff like that. Hotels. Hotels can be nice, especially when you haven't left your house in a while. <laughs> yeah. Um, to change your pace. Uh, once again, Isle of Wisdom is a terrific new album from Halas. I will try to say it correctly. Thank you very much for helping me out with that. Uh, it's coming out on Napalm Records April the 8th. Marcus, it's been wonderful to see you and talk to you. Thank you so much for sharing your story with Ghost Cult. And again, like I said, I, I all the best success on this new record, and I cannot wait to see you live again someday. Thank you very much for having me, and thank you for all your kind words. And hope to see you on the road. <laughs>